I guess so soon after you left, I guess the Germans they, started the to round German, up people. They went to the concentration camp in, in uh, my whole family, my brother, my sister-in-law, and the children, and my father and my mother went to Treplice. That was a concentration camp. And then Where was that? That was in Czechoslovakia. In Czechoslovakia. Yeah. And uh, from there, in 1944, they were sent to Bergen-Belsen, another concentration camp. And where was that? And that was in Poland. Yeah. And they left, and they, they uh, burned them in the, in the, what is it called? The gas chamber. Gas chamber. And then you found this out after the war? And the after records? the war came a lady by the name of Rosenstein, and she told me that my mother went in the kettle car to the concentration camp, and she died in, in the, on the way. On the train. Yeah. That was a horrible thing when I heard that. It was terrible. And my father and my brother, they all were gassed. And my cousin, she, she had a friend, a man friend, and she refused to leave him. So she could have lived, but because she she went with him, then they took them too to the concentration camp, and they all were gassed. Everyone, all my whole family was gassed. There was nobody coming back, nobody. So that is my life, and now I live here in the sequoias, and I'm very well sheltered. So how did you? So after England, then, uh, what what made you come? How did you get to San Francisco? How did oh, that yeah. all happen? Oh, yeah. My God, I forgot already. We lived in England for eight years. And uh, in the end, we had, Milan had a job in a winery. And uh, he became so depressed because it was a job like bottle washing and uh, he had the man, the owner of the winery, made him do things he was what was illegal. He took off uh, from bottles which were very expensive. He took off the labels and put them on other bottles, and that was illegal. And he uh, he was uh, so depressed doing that because he knew one day they will find out and and make him responsible for what he did. So. He said, I have to quit. I can't stay in this job. So he quit. And I said, no, now, what shall we do now? So he said, let's go to America, because his cousin, Agi Krasny, was living in San Francisco. And she sent us an affidavit, and we didn't in the, in the beginning, we didn't want to accept the affidavit because we were already used to live in England, so we didn't want to risk to go again mm -hmm. to America and make new routes. And so we didn't go, but then when Milan left the job, we asked her for another affidavit and we came here.
But coming to America was not so easy. Even though you had an affidavit, you had to have now a visa again to go to America. And you had to go to the American consulate and they had to examine you. And we were four people to be examined. Now we were afraid that one of us will have something, they will find something and we won't be able to. But thank God we were all well and we got the visa. And when we came to the point to go, I got cold feet. I didn't want to leave. And I said, look, Milan, you will find another job. Why should we leave? We have a living here and we will find something. He said, no, now we go to America. Aggie wants us to come. She begged us in all letters. So let's go. So, okay. So we took, we, we got a ticket to go on Queen Elizabeth, on the big boat Queen Elizabeth, to America. And after the, the we had no, everything was rationed in England, even the bread. And white bread was a rarity, and an egg was a rarity. We had one egg a week. Even after the war? There were still rations? Still everything was So this up. was 1948? That was 1948. And when we came on the boat to come to America, we had one night which was pleasant. And a man, a very well-to-do man, invited us to come to the first class on the boat. And we went to the uh, lady, the woman who uh, helped us in, on the boat. What is the stubmädel there? Anyway, I said, could you please iron my evening gown? Uh, we are invited to go to the first mm -hmm. class. And that was the first night. And when we came to, to this man who invited us, he looked at us, we were all dressed up, which you never do at the first night. Uh, you never dress up on a boat the first night. I didn't know that. Is that bad luck or? No, but no. It, it was funny how we okay. were dressed. So we had a wonderful meal, white bread, white rolls I haven't seen for ages. And we enjoyed the meal very much. The second meal, the, the sea was so rough yeah. that we all got seasick. <laughs> nobody could eat. We were all throwing up and we were in the cabin and nobody could go to dinner. So I said, thank God we had one night. It was a funny night, but it was lovely. So then we came to America and we were one day late because of the rough sea. Mm -hmm. How many, how long did it take? It took us a week, a whole week to go to America. So when we arrived, it was so cold. It was a blizzard in New York. And Mr. Seifter picked us up on the, at the boat. Did you see the Statue of Liberty? Yeah, that was, oh, that was phenomenal when we saw the, Statue of Liberty, and we, we were all singing, and we were all elated. It was lovely. And then we saw little ants on the, on the festland, on the streets. We saw the streets from the boat, and like yellow little ants were running. They were the yellow cups. We didn't know what... The taxis. The taxis. Yeah. They were little ants. It was so funny. That was our first impression of America. Mm -hmm. The Statue of Liberty and these little taxis. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Because in England, I guess the taxis weren't yellow. 
No, they were all black. Yeah. All black. And then we came on land and Mr. Seifter greeted us and said, you know, I was standing here and waiting for you a whole day. You were late. And I said, I'm sorry, we were late. So now he took us to her a hotel and all these Czechoslovakian people came and greeted us and they said, you have to come to tea in a conditorai, in a, uh, in, in a, what is it, conditorai? Well, anyway, coffee house mm -hmm. and everybody is there in the afternoon at four o'clock. So we all went there and we met so many people and they all said, stay in New York, you will have a good living here, you will have a good job and we make you a good stay in New York. But it was so cold, it was such a blizzard that our children became frozen knees. So we had to go to a store to buy some slacks because the boy had shorts and, and Margaret had so short skirts. So we bought slacks and the impression coming to Macy's was incredible. I couldn't believe the goods they have on the racks. I thought that was cardboard. I was going to touch all garments. I said, it's impossible. In England, there were... So was, many clothes. So, there was nothing. That was all utility. You had to buy what you see. You couldn't choose. Yeah. That was a coat. You had to buy the coat. <laughs> but here in, 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 in Macy's, there were racks and racks full of material, of, of goods. It, what the impressions we got, it's it was fantastic. Yeah. So we stayed for two, three days, and I said to Milan, this is not for me, it's too cold. So we, we called up Agi Krasny, my cousin, and she said, come right away, we prepare for you to come. So she took us a hotel in El Drisco, in San Francisco, in El Drisco. It was a beautiful hotel, and she said, now I pay you for one month. And in this month, I hope you find a job. So we looked for jobs, and there were no jobs. So Milan found a busboy job in Mark Hopkins, which is one of the best hotels. Mm -hmm. So he was a busboy, and he brought us always in the evening some cookies. I still see these little cookies. They were so delicious. And I was working as a seamstress in a, in a shop here in San Francisco. And we, we So did you take the train from New York? We, take, we took the train. All the way from New York to San Francisco. Yeah, two, all the way. About yeah. two weeks. But in in Chicago, yeah, we were invited by the family Marcus. They wanted us to come to visit, so we visited them. It was a lovely stay with them. It was really, she was a cousin and he was a cousin of mine, and they were very kind to us. And after three days we left and we went to San Francisco on the same train. And in Reno, when we arrived in Reno, in California, the, uh, the ticket man in the train came and knocked on our door. Get up, get up! This is Reno! You can get a divorce here! So that was a joke of his, and he, he made us, at one o'clock at night, he made us get up. That was his joke. <laughs> and then we came to, to San Francisco. No, we arrived in Oakland. And in Oakland, 
we had to take the boat to San Francisco. And the Agi Krasny waited for us in San Francisco. And then she took us by taxi to the Hotel El Trisco. And didn't you have a message to bring to Sophie and George? Was that? Oh, no. How was that? That was a long time later. That was later, okay. Oh, then we already left El Drisco and we got a apartment in a beautiful apartment house on 2070 Pacific Avenue. And uh, we had one bedroom, one dining room, Wait a minute. One dining room and one living room and a little closet. And Tommy slept in the closet <laughs> and I slept on the couch on the, in the living room and Milan slept on the couch in the dining room. And Margaret had the bedroom. <laughs> and after six months living on Pacific Avenue, we got a telegram from Korek Road, Milan's brother, telling us we should do everything to get him to, to San Francisco. Where was he? In Cuba. Oh. And where did he come from? He came from uh, Czechoslovakia. So he escaped to Cuba. He escaped, no, he was in France. And then he went to Cuba. But they didn't allow him to land. So uh, he was on the boat, the dam. Uh, ship of the dam. Ship of the dam. Wasn't Harry on that and as well? And Harry too, yeah. So uh, Milan sent him. Uh, is that where Harry landed too in Cuba? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they came to New York with our, with our help. So these were all tragic affairs when we had to send him the money, which wasn't so easy because yeah. we didn't have so much, really. But you do help when you have to. So then you, uh, so, so Grandpa was a busboy and you were a seamstress. Yeah. And uh, that was already uh, quite good that we made some little money. You made some money. And with the first money I made, I bought a little radio. And I still remember the make. It was Filco. And we were so proud to have a radio. That was good. And then how did you uh, save the money or how did the opportunity for the cleaners happen? Yeah, uh, Aggie lent us the money and we could buy this cleaning store. Yeah. And uh, on hate. On hate street. Yeah. And, and we made uh, good money uh, in the cleaning store. It was a nice store. And when uh, after maybe two years came the flower people to Hate Street, <laughs> and they messed up the whole district. They were dirty, there were so many, they uh, took uh, drugs, marijuana, <laughs> and uh, the cleaning store became uh, very bad. And he went to the bank manager. He was very good with them, the the uh, what was his name? I can't remember his name. But he was a manager in the bank. And he said, Mrs. De Ross, Hate Street was always a good street. It will be uh, again a good street. Just stick it out. But that was a bad uh, idea. Yeah. And uh, we stuck it out and uh, it was not the right thing to do. We should have left Hate Street. And then when Milan was 65, he, uh, we, we sold the place. And uh, 
I got a job afterwards in a other cleaning store and made alterations. And so we, we made our living. He got social security and uh, I worked and had a job. And then we, he got sick. Milan was, had this bad case of, uh, what was it? Depression. Depression. Manic depression. And manic depression. And that was very sad. We, it took quite a while before the Prozac medication came hmm. up and that helped him a lot. Oh, he took Prozac? Mm -hmm. oh. And how did you meet Sophie and George? What was the situation? Oh, that? oh, oh, that was before. Oh, they're here. And uh, we could live again our little life until his death when he died. That was very sad. And uh, I had to live in my little house, which we bought during the time we had the store. And uh, the 28th Avenue, our house, was very nice. We were comfortable, but I was alone, and it wasn't nice. So how did you meet Sophie and George? Hello. Hi. 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 Yeah. Yeah, now it's all right. Okay, I forgot to put uh, a very important uh, uh, family, Mr. Dr. Fuchs and his wife, uh, Sophie. They played a big role uh, in Margaret's life. Um, I met them when uh, uh, George came from uh, Cuba, from uh, he, he was in Cuba and then he came to live here with his wife and they had no children and uh, Margaret was seven years old and we met them and they were so kind enough that they said Margaret will stay every weekend in our house which made it so beautiful for me because I had to work the whole Saturday. I wouldn't know what to do with Margaret. So, she was picked up uh, Friday afternoon and was brought home on Sunday afternoon. And they helped Margaret in developing and uh, educating and uh, through her whole life, Margaret was taken care of because they were so uh, beautiful in bringing, in helping us bringing up Margaret. Now, didn't, now, what's the story when you, uh, didn't George have a mess? like how did you meet? He came to the house one day with a message? Oh, uh, George came, no, no first, first he called. Okay. And uh, he said, Mrs. Ross, I have a letter to uh, get to you. May we come to see you? And I said, why don't you mail the letter? And he said, no, we would like to hand it in, oh, personally, okay. So we made a date, and here they arrived. Sophie had straw blonde hair. Hmm. She looked to me like a lady of the evening. <laughs> and uh, 
afterwards we made so much fun because my impression was so different of the outcome. Mm -hmm. And George, is Dr. Fuchs, he was a tall, very handsome man, and we became the best of friends. It's not, yeah. Yeah. So 